following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Alpha et Omega. Let us explain alchemically what the cosmic Christ said in Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, said the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty, Shaddai in Hebrew, Revelation 1.8. When observing the pentagram, we discover that it has imprinted in the middle, two mysterious Greek letters mentioned in the former quotation. We also find in this mysterious symbol specific words written with letters of the three original Christian alphabets, which synthesize what is written in the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. John 1, 1 to 3. On the arms and legs of the pentagram, we find Hebrew words that hide alchemical meanings of what is written in the book of Moses. The first books of the Bible were written originally in Hebrew. Thus, in order to comprehend the meaning of what is written in the Old Testament, we have to learn the Hebrew letters. Aleph and Tav are the first and last letters of the Hebrew alphabet. The first letter of the Greek alphabet is Alpha and is written on the pentagram at the level of its throat. The last letter of the Greek alphabet is Omega which is on the pentagram at the level of its sexual organs. And this alchemically addresses something very significant, given that the cosmic Christ said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. The Archeus, the prime vital principle or force, and Telos, the end, or objective of life. The word tetragrammaton is written around the pentagram with letters of the Latin alphabet. 
the Hebrew alphabet, is studied by many Kabbalists in this day and age. Greek and Latin alphabets are presently used by many Western countries. Hebrew, Latin, and Greek are languages used in esoteric Gnostic liturgy. Remember that it is written, and Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was Ingri, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. John chapter 19, 19 to 20. This is why the Kabbalistic words of the pentagram are written with Hebrew, Greek, and Latin letters in order to indicate that the pentagram represents the Logos, or Word of God. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew, and the four Gospels of the New Testament in Greek. These esoteric writings were translated into Latin, and this is how the main body of the Bible was formed. Now, Samael on the Or is delivering the fifth gospel, the fifth gospel, through all of his books that he wrote in Latin America, and which are being translated into many languages. The fifth gospel is the core of the four gospels. The fifth gospel shows the light hidden within the four gospels. The fifth gospel clarifies and explains the four gospels. In the pentagram, the four gospels are represented by the four elements, namely air, the wand, fire, the sword, water, the cup, earth, the hexagram, or star of Bethlehem. The star of Bethlehem is the seal of Solomon. The six points of the star are masculine. The six outer obtuse angles that exist between point and point are feminine. In synthesis, this star has 12 rays, six masculine and six feminine. These are the 12 fundamental salts, which are governed by the 12 zodiacal signs. Samael on the Or. In Kabbalah, these four elements are represented by the three modern letters of Hebrew alphabet, Aleph, Shin, and Mem, which represent air, fire, and water, respectively. The salt, or the element earth, as a Shakti potential within the three of them is the Hebrew letter Yod, which represents the tenth Sephira, Malkut, symbol of the earth. Master Samael on the Or stated in the Treatise of Sexual Alchemy, salt is the substance of all things and the fixed principle of all that exists. Salt works upon the sulfur, the letter Shin, and the mercury, the letter Mem. Thus, sulfur and mercury make the salt volatile, letter Aleph, just as they are, salt thickens them and in return makes them fixed. When salt is dissolved in an appropriate liquor, then it dissolves solid things and gives them consistency. 
Salt gives a form of perfection to the child of gold of sexual alchemy. Samael on the Or. Most of the mantras uh, pronounced in Gnostic liturgy are from Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. These three languages derive from Watan, which, it was the, uh, which was the language spoken in Atlantis. In the pentagram, the fifth gospel is represented by the two serpents of the caduceus of Mercury, or tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is between Alpha and Omega. This is why the pentagram as a symbol is very powerful. In synthesis, the pentagram is the symbol of the Logos, which in Greek means word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word is the Logos. This is why when we address the Lord Christ, we say the Logos. As we stated in previous lectures, the Teomert Malogos, a word which means God's causal word. In order to comprehend the Logos or written word, we have to study the alphabet, whose letters are simple symbols that form words that we read when we learn them. Right now, for instance, are, uh, we are reading these words written with Latin symbols or letters related to the sounds or languages that we speak. Likewise, in order to comprehend the letters or symbols and sounds that are pronounced in the words of the Old and New Testaments in the Bible, we have to learn the Greek and Hebrew alphabets. So when we read the symbols or letters of the alphabets of those languages, we then comprehend what is written there. But those symbols or letters must not be read superficially as when we read the newspaper, because each letter has a meaning behind its form or shape. This is why we insist that we have to learn and study the Kabbalistic Hebrew alphabet, which is formed by 22 letters, since these relate to the 22 arcana of the Tarot. Thus, when we read the Bible in the Hebrew language and understand what each letter means, we then can see the spirit that vivifies those Kabbalistic words and thus find the deep significance of the word or Logos. This is why the Cosmic Christ as Logos said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending of any alphabet, because Christ is the word or ha-dabar, as it is said in Hebrew. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim, and the Word, ha-dabar, was Elohim. <coughs> when the Cosmic Christ says, I am Alpha and Omega, he is embracing the whole universe. Because in order to communicate with each other, any humanity of any planet uses words, a language. And in order to write their language, they have to use an alphabet, symbols or letters, characters that they learn according to their idiosyncrasy. Here on the earth, we have Sanskrit, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, and other very complicated alphabets, as well as the runes that are also very difficult to learn and read. 
since their shapes hide many things. Let us read the book of Genesis in relation with Asoth, or A and Z, Alpha and Omega, Aleph and Tab, which relate to what we have to explain in relation to the beginning and the ending of our alchemical work, which is the main topic of this lecture. The Alpha and Omega in the macrocosmos and in the microcosmos. Let us read the first verse of Genesis in the Bible. Bereshith, Bera Elohim, at ha shamaim et beat haaretz. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Even though the first sentence is usually translated that way, it can be cabalistically understood in so many other ways, as we already taught in many lectures. So behold, here another different meaning of the same paragraph, when observing its letters in a different way. It is written, an enmity I am setting between thee and between the woman. In Genesis 3, 15. I am setting is written as sheath. Not that the word setting begins with Aleph and ends with Tav. A sheath in Hebrew. Returning to the first sentence of Genesis, it can also, it can also be read as follows. Bar a sheath. Bar a Elohim. Ata shamaim veata. Aretz, translated into English, we read, The sun I am setting, a Elohim's sun, thou heavens and thou earth. The sun is, I will put, bar a shift. A Elohim's son is Bar A Elohim. Thou heavens, Ata Shamaim, and thou earth, Ve Ata Aretz. Bar is son in Aramaic, which is a synonym of thou, which in Hebrew is Ata which is a crystallization of the light or fire, the prime emanation of the solar absolute. Fire and light are two phenomena of, of one thing. The sun is not a person, but the fire or light that gives origin to the universe or heavens and earth. The universe is represented by the Hebrew word Atah, which contains Aleph and Tav, the beginning and the ending of the Hebrew alphabet, plus the letter He, that represents the Ein Sof, or Makom. Atah is the universe, placed by Makom, the abstract absolute space. Who is Aelohim? Aelohim is a city that we find in the abstract 
absolute space. Do not confuse Elohim with Elohim. Elohim refers to that aspect of deity from the Sephirah Keter to Malkut, and that forms the ten Sephirahs. Elohim is beyond the universe, or the ten Sephirahs. It is an abstract city. It is Makom, the space in Hebrew, that has no form. The Kabbalah describes Makom as the unknowable divine. The space that in Hebrew Kabbalah is named Makom is named in the Nahuatl language De Omeyokan, where we only find wind and darkness. In Kabbalah, we represent the three aspects of Makom, the abstract absolute space, with three names. The letter Alpha, or A, or Aleph, symbol of the wind, is the letter with which we write the beginning of the words that describe the three aspects of such city. Namely, Ain, Ain Sof, and Ain Sof Or. The crystallization of Makom, the space, is Ata, which in Hebrew Kabbalah represents the universe. Ata is written with three letters, Aleph, Tav, and He, which have the value of 1, 400, and 5, respectively. When we make the addition of such values, we get 10. The number 10 represents the 10 sephiroth. And in the Latin alphabet, 10 represents the letters I and O, E, O, the divine androgen. Thus, thou, heavens, and thou, earth, ata shamaim veata aretz, means the androgen within the ten sephiroth of heavens and earth, represented by the four worlds of Kabbalah, Atziluth, Bria, Yetzirah, and Asya. Veata aretz, and thou earth, also represents our physicality. Because in alchemical Kabbalah, our physical body, the Sephira Malkut, is called earth, land, field, Mizrahim, Egypt, etc. Thus, physically, all of us have the ten Sephiroth, yet in potentiality not in activity. Since the plan of Makom, the abstract absolute space, is to make Adam, the human being. The being is God. Thus, whatever beingness is there is God. Human beings cannot know their beingness without knowing God. Neither they can know God without knowing their beingness. This is the microcosmos in the image and likeness of the macrocosmos. 
The universe is formed by the sum total of all human beings, which is the sum total of all of the Elohim. Thus, the realization of each one of these ten sephiroth, which personify the universe within us, depends on transforming our physical will and making it one with the will of our own being, our own God. On our earth, or physicality, as it is done in the heavens. So, if we want to do it, it will be done. And if we do not want to do it, it will not be done. So, it all depends on how we use our will. Remember the phrase that was written upon the threshold of the Temple of Delphi. Know thyself, and thou shalt know the universe and its gods. So if you know thy, yourself or thyself, in other words, if you know all of the parts of yourself, that is, all of the archetypes in you, Atta, the ten sephiroth, in your physicality, and if you develop them, you will enter into the other spheres of heaven. This is to be born again, as the cosmic Christ stated in the Gospels. Thus, Bar Esh It, the Son of Fire, the prime emanation of the Solar Absolute, or Makom, created the universe by fecundating it, the quarters of space. Likewise, the Son of Fire has to create the solar bodies of the human being by fecundating it, our waters, through the procedures that we already explained in many lectures. Let us read uh, what the Master Samael on the <coughs> stated. The waters of the cares are in our sexual glands. These waters are the semen. If God had to fecundate the waters in order to create the universe, then we must do the same within ourselves. These waters are the semen of our sexual organs. Treatise of Sexual Alchemy. It is also necessary to learn the logoic names of the ten sephiroth in the world of Atziluth in order to comprehend better the Old and New Testaments in the Bible. The first emanation of the absolute abstract space is e -he -ye. It is written, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, Eheye, Asher, Eheye. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Eheye has sent me unto you. Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. So Keter, Eheye, means he is. 
חוכמה, has the name of Yod Chava, which means beingness. Bina has the name of Yod Chava Elohim, beingness of the Elohim. Chesed has the name of El, which in Hebrew means God. Gebura, Elohim Gibor, the might of the Elohim. Tifereth, Eloah, Va, Da'at, meaning goddess and knowledge. Nesach, Yodhava, Zabaot, meaning the host of beingness. Hod has the name of Elohim Zabaot, meaning the host of Elohim. Yesod has the name Shaddai El Hai, meaning the almighty living God. And the last one, Malkuth, Adonai, which means the Lord. All of these archetypical names are written in the Bible. Thus, when we must, uh, we must know their meaning and corresponding sephiroth in order to understand the Kabbalistic meaning of what we read. yod Zavaot, for instance, relates to the word of the mind, the world of the mind, which is Netzach. So by knowing the archetype of Netzach, we know what, what paragraphs of the Bible are addressing the mind in synthesis. We have to study the Bible, but not as when we read the newspaper. Because the Bible is a Kabbalistic, alchemical book and can only be understood if we know Kabbalah and alchemy. To begin, we have to learn the Hebrew alphabet. The logos, the word, that which we call God, Ha Davar is sound, vibration, energy, and is not a person. The Logos, as intelligence, is light that does not need form in order to be. Yet, in order for the light to take shape, it does it through the help of matter. God, the Logos, is fire, a devouring fire. Light is fire, is energy that becomes matter. Matter as substance is the it of Bereshit, the alchemical salt or letter Yad, that through the cross or letter Tav becomes the universe. Or as Genesis states, the heavens and the earth. Thus, light and matter, or, or energy and matter, emerges from Makom, the abstract absolute space. You are the salt or yard of Malkut, the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, that is, if you fornicate, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thus, thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. 
<coughs> you are the light, better said, in the yard is Christ, the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on the candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew, Matthew uh, chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. This is why it is written, A voice is crying in a wilderness, preparing the way of yod Hava, making it straight in a desert a highway to our God. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. A voice, the Logos, is summoned in the word me ve ma dabar, ve midbar, which means the word. This is how the former quotation is read in Gnostic Kabbalah. The Logos is summon through the voice of the prophets. The word is gestated in the throat of all the initiates that walked on the straight path. The throat is a uterus where the word is gestated. The throat is a sexual organ of the gods. Samael on the or. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Mantras are powerful words that attract the logos, the vibration, the fire, the light of the word in order to transform our psychosomatic nature. This is how the Logos, or solar light, prepares the way of the Lord. It is necessary for the spirit of Elijah, Elias, Elius, the solar light, to develop through alchemy our inner John the Baptist before the advent of Christ. This is why it is written, Behold, I will send you Elios, the son, or Elijah in English, Eliao in Hebrew, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Jodhaba. Malachi, chapter 4, verse 5. And who is Elijah? To answer this, we have this beautiful picture of Elijah, or Elias, Elias, riding a chariot of fire, pulled by horses of fire. This reminds us the Greek Apollo, riding his horses, which pulled his chariot of fire and the chariot of the Hindu Surya or sun god. The seven horses yoked to the sun god's chariot are named Gayatri, Bharati, Usnik, Jagati, Tristup, Anustup, in Pankti. These names are Vedic names that designate the seven horses that carry the sun god's chariot or the sun around the earth, 
which is a very profound symbol. The Bible states, And it came to pass, when they were gone over that Elijah, said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And Elijah said to Elisha, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, and they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw Elijah no more. This is from uh, the books of Kings, the second book of Kings, chapter 2. Verse 9 to 12. Since the original name of Elijah, Elias, Elios, the son in Greek, S-U-N, is Eliao in Hebrew, <coughs> let us explain cabalistically and alchemically its meaning. Eliao. El means God in Hebrew, our own particular individual spirit, and is the divine name given to Hesed in the world of Atziluth, world of archetypes. All of us have our own El, which is what we call the monad, the unity within. Any monad has three divine atoms within. These atoms relate to the laws of the Triamatsikano, the law of creation, the law of three. Through them, we can create our own particular individual, John the Baptist, within, if we know how. Those atoms are named in Kabbalah Keter, Chochmah, and Binah. And in Christianity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Gnosis, they are the first Logos, the second Logos, and the third Logos. And they are represented by the three letters of the Holy Name of God. Yod, He, and Vav. The holy name of God has three letters, but since the second is repeated as a fourth, we say that the name of God is formed by four letters, namely Yod, He, Vav, He, or the Tetragrammaton, which the translators of the Bible translated as Jehovah. <coughs> the second He in yod He bab He represents the Ein Sof or abstract space. Elijah or Eliao is written El Yao. This means God Yao. El refers to our own particular monad and Iao to the three divine atoms that connect our monad 
to its logoic ray. Elijah the prophet is an eon, a master of the day, who represents our monad. In order to incarnate Elijah, our own particular spirit, or he said, we have to create Johannes the Baptist within. This is done through sexual alchemy. Let us read what the Zohar states. The words and fowl that shall fly above the earth allude to Elijah, the spirit of Yao, the Logos, who is present whenever the rite of circumcision, better said, the rite of sexual magic is performed. When a throne or seat is formed in our central nervous system and set specially for him, the monad, by pronouncing the words, this is El Yao throne. If this is negle neglected, that is, if there is orgasm, he does not attend Zohar. Circumcision or surgical removal of the first skin prepuce from the human penis is worthless if the circumcised does not practice the rite of sexual magic with his wife. That is, if he does not remove the bestial, bestial orgasm from the sexual act. That's why Moses wrote, And if the semen of any man go out from him during copulation, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the even. The woman also with whom a man shall lie with semen of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the even. This is in Leviticus chapter 15, verse 16 and 18. By avoiding the bestial orgasm is how El Iao, Elijah, is present during the rite of sexual magic. This is how El Yao develops the solar bodies within any alchemist. When the alchemist rises the Kundalini as fire and light in the sephir of Malkut, Yesod, Hod, Netzah, Tiferet, Geburah, and Hesed, he then has developed E, A, O, U, A, M, S. In other words, Johannes the Baptist. Within. Thus he has the right to incarnate his own particular individual Elijah or individual monad. Elijah is an archetype that we need to develop within us. Therefore, if we want the advent of our own particular individual Jesus Christ, the light of the world, we need first the advent of Elijah. So first Elijah and thereafter Jesus Christ. This is how the great work is alchemically done. Because fornicators are formless and void. This is why it is written. 
And the earth was formless and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And he said, The Spirit of God, Eliyahu, hovered in the central nervous system upon the face of the sexual creative waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. When the priest and priestess know how to control their sexual waters during the rite of sexual magic, they develop the true human being within, who is Johannes the Baptist. This is why it is written, And in he, Johannes, shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Gospel of Luke, verse one, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 17. The Greek name, Johannes, hides the seven esoteric vowels, e, e, o, u, a, m, s, that symbolize the seven lower sephiroth, or seven bodies of the true human being. This is why Johannes, the apostle, states that in the beginning was the word, and this is why in the crucifixion, he is in Yesod, the foundation, the foot of the cross. Likewise, this is why Johannes the Baptist baptizes the word, the Lord, in Yesod, or River Jordan. Likewise, this is why in the book of Revelation, Johannes the Divine Beholds the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty, Shaddai in Yesod. Yohanan, Johannes. John. Observe that the names John, the Hebrew Johanan, as well as the Greek name Johannes, have the letter N, N, which in Aramaic is Nun, which means fish. Johanan and Johannes had two Nuns. These represent the two fish of Pisces the sperm and the ovum, the male and female forces of the creative waters of baptism. The three lines of the letter Nun represent the three primary creative forces in nature and in the cosmos. Three forces in one as follows. When the letter Yad is elongated, it becomes the letter Vav, which, when is bent at the bottom, is transformed into the letter Nun. So the three primary forces are one in the letter Nun, or N, which in Aramaic means fish, the seed, or sperm, the salt of the earth. Remember, it is certain that the N. seminis and its peculiar hydrogen C12 is seed and fruit at the same time. Within the, within the human organism, the passive food on the plate passes through many transformations, refinements, and subtle changes that are processed 
within the musical scale Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si. The transformation of the passive food of the plate begins with the note Do. The resulting time of the first state or transformation follows with the note Re. The very refined food that osmo osmotically passes into the sanguineous fluid continues with the note Mi and so on, successively. Other processes follow until the best element of the entire organism becomes elaborated, that is, the wonderful elixir, the seminal liquor, with its hydrogen 12, in the note C. The sexual hydrogen C12 is found in the semen. That hydrogen is the creative power of the third logos. The first musical octave, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, corresponds exactly to the manufacture of the sexual hydrogen C12 within the sexual glands of the human organism. This is how the fire Christ, the light of the world, becomes flesh, fish, seed, semen. Joshua, the son of Nun. This is how the fire of the solar logos descends into matter and becomes the sexual hydrogen C12 within the sexual glands of the human organism. This is why it is written. And after the death of Moses, the servant of yod it came to pass that yod spoke unto Joshua, or Yeshua, the son of Nun, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, the book of Yeshua, or Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1. This is, this is how Yeshua descends to Jordan, unto Johannes, unto John. This is why it is also written. Then comes Yeshua, or Yeshua the son of Nun, from Galilee to Jordan, unto John, to be baptized of him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comes thou to me? And Yeshua, Jesus, Joshua, answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. Matthew chapter 3, from 13 to 15 verses. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si also relates to the seven serpents of fire and the seven serpents of light that we need to develop through the seven lower sephiroth. By practicing the rite of sexual alchemy in Yesod or River Jordan, the one who does it is El I A O Do Re Mi Fa Sol La Si relate to the seven days of Genesis. This is why it is necessary for Elijah to incarnate within the solar bodies of John the Baptist in order to prepare the way of Yeshua. John the Baptist existed, yet through his life he represented our own particular individual John the Baptist, who is an archetype within all of us that we need to develop. So, John the Baptist represents any initiate that works with Elijah, 
Elías, Helios, the solar force. This is how the junction of Elijah and John the Baptist is alchemically and cabalistically explained. So, the logos, the word, the solar light, works through the sexual creative waters, through different octaves. Helios, the solar light, the solar radiation, the radiant electromagnetic energy of the sun, penetrates all the kingdoms of nature. This radiant energy is necessary for the metabolism of all living organisms. Life cannot exist without Helios, the sun. We absorb solar light through our psychosomatic senses and through all that we eat and breathe. And by means of our metabolism, it is transformed into semen. In Gnostic alchemy, we call semen the seed, the yod or sexual shakti creative potential, either in the male or female organism. Thus, any seed or semen contains solar light. In any seed is contained the most precious creative energy of God. Thus, thanks to the solar light within the seed, semen, life can be multiplied in any kingdom of nature. Through the sexual act, the human seed creates and multiplies the physical life. Likewise, through the sexual alchemy, the human seed can alchemically create and multiply spiritual life. Yes, it is through sexual alchemy how Helios, the solar light, creates our own particular individual John the Baptist. So, during the rite of sexual alchemy, practice between husband and wife, we learn how to liberate Helios, the solar light, or male-female solar shakti potential, enclosed within the sperm and the oven, represented in the two fish of the sign of Pisces, the symbol of early Christianity. Helios, the solar light, creates the vessel, the solar receptacle, in order for the word, the Lord, to enter within us. The Lord is the Logos, the prime emanation of the solar absolute. If we do not create the solar bodies, it is impossible for the world to enter because the Lord is a devouring fire. When Jesus received the word in the Jordan, he already had his seven lower sephiroth Christify, solar. If the Lord will descend into us without us having the solar vessels, the Lord would convert us into ashes, will burn us alive, because He is solar fire. Common and ordinary human beings can only believe in the Lord, since the Logos cannot abide as fire within them. Humanoids only have the solar light as a sexual substance within them, in order for them to create their solar bodies. But if we lose the semen or sexual solar substance, with what are we going to create those solar vessels of the true human being? 
the word can become flesh in order to make of us children of Elohim. Only when the true solar human being is created in the image of Elohim through the alchemical cross. This is why it is written. In about the ninth hour, Yeshua cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. That is to say, Eli, Eli, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Clearly, every initiate feels really abandoned before reaching resurrection. <coughs> Some of them that stood there, when they hear that he said, this man calls for Elias, Helios, Eliu, the Son Christ, the innermost Logos. He is our supreme aspiration. This is from Samael on the Or. Alchemically and Kabbalistically, Eli, Eli, Lama Savaktani means now, by means of the cross, I, the human soul, immerse myself into the twilight of the ninth sphere, which is the light that precedes the dawning of the Son Christ, which is the innermost Logos, Yodhava, the essence or beingness of Christ. The ninth hour relates to the ninth sephira, Yesod, the sexual force. So the gospel joins the ninth hour with Elijah. Because in the eighth hour, through the rite of circumcision or sexual purity, Elijah, the solar logos, penetrates into the central nervous system of the initiate. And in the ninth hour, Yesod, the ninth sphere, in the sexual act, in the matrimony, in the cross, is where the sexual purity of such initiate is qualified by Elijah, the solar logos. Remember, Johannes baptizes the word in the Jordan, that is, in the waters of the ninth sphere, the river of life. Johannes baptizes the 22 Kabbalistic letters of the Logos, or the rose, by means of the cross. All of this is represented in the symbol of the rosy cross. For a better Kabbalistic comprehension, let us study what Elijah the innermost stated in the Zohar. Shimon Bar Hohai said, The mysterious meaning of the word Elohim was revealed to me one day that I was standing by the seashore when Elios, Elijah, Eliao, the prophet, suddenly, through a sunrise, appeared and said unto me, Rabbi, do you know who has created these means? 
And I answered and said, These means the heavens and their hosts, the work of the Holy One, blessed be He, which it behooves every man to study, as it is written, When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast established, and also how excellent is Ma, thy name in all the earth, the name of our Lord. Rabbi, said uh, Elios, Eliao, Elijah. The word Elohim is a hidden word and was revealed and explained in the heavenly college thus. When Makom, the most secret one, or Ein Sof, the limitless space, wished to reveal himself, he first created a point, or letter Yad, and placed it between the two mems of the word Makom. The two mems symbolize the Akasha, or waters of space, an ocean without limits, thus forming Maim within, and it, the Yad, became a divine thought in Bina, the Holy Spirit, in which were Malkut or Earth as the ideas of all created things and forms of all things, and also that holy glorious light of the Theomermalogos, wherein was the Holy of Holies, a structure of magnificent and lofty dimensions, the work of that divine thought, Bina which is the beginning or corner stone to this structure hidden and concealed in the name Yom, light, as yet ineffable, fine, known only as me, meaning who, who wish to manifest itself and to be called by a name and become arranged and clothed with a precious and resplendent garment. Me, which reversed is read yam, means see, but me means who. So me, therefore, created Ele, these archetypes, which then became a part of me, the divine name. For these words, joined and associated together, form Elohim, which is composed of Ele, which means these, and me, who means who, and which existed not previous to, to this uh, conjunction. The worshippers of the golden calf referred to this mystery when they cried, These are your gods, Israel, who you brought out of Maretz, the land of Mizrahim, Malkut, Egypt. As on the work of creation, me, 
remains conjoined with Ele. So in the name Elohim, they are always inseparable. And by reason of this unity, the word abides as it is. Having thus spoken, Elijah, the son, Elias, sun setting, disappeared. And I saw him no more. So it is from him, the solar logos, I learned the meaning of this mystery of me and Ele, the archetypes, or Elohim, gods and goddesses, Zohar. Master Samael on the or said, the great apocalyptic events take place at the shores of the immense sea of life. Thus, the point created by Makom, the Ainsof, is the letter Yad, the tenth letter, which from Keter descended into Malkut, the tenth Sephira, our physicality, and which through our metabolism became the seed within our creative sexual waters of life. This is why it is written, an Elohim called the light Yam, which means day, and Jam is written with Jod and Mem. However, when Adam and Eve committed fornication, that is, when they ejaculated the yam, that is, the yod and the mem, out from the sexual glands, they remained in darkness, without light, without yam, in other words. They realized that they were blind and naked. It is written, and God said, Who has declared to thee that thou art naked, when eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee not to eat? Genesis 3, verse 11. Remember, thou is Ata in Hebrew, Kabbalah, and represents the universe. A time is written with three letters, namely Aleph, Tav, and He, which have the value of 1, 400, and 5, respectively. Thus, when we make the addition of such values, we get 10. The number 10 represents the 10 Sephiroth and the letter Yad. This is why we received 10 commandments, because we have 10 fingers, 5 in each hand. And hand in Hebrew is Yad. And we also have ten toes, because as above, so below. Thus, naked means that the, that the ten Sephiroth, the archetypes within them, were not self-realized. They were only in potentiality, not in activity. And that the Yad where the solar image of God abides was not within them anymore because of the fact that they fornicated like the animals. That is, because they ejaculated me, their sexual force, out of their bodies. The book of Revelation says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I will, I would, thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Indeed, lukewarm souls are cast out of the temple of wisdom. 
This wisdom is for the ardent souls, because thou sayest, I am rich, and increase with goods, and have need of nothing, and know not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy neckness do not appear. The, the shame of your neck, nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will soup with him and he with me. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in the central nervous system, my throne, even as I also overcame and I am set down with my father in the central nervous system, his throne. Revelation 3, verse 15 to 21. The ten sephiroth are the ten branches of the tree of life that the Hindus represent by the many arms protruding from the trunk or body of their gods. These Elohim are born from the transmutation of the sexual Shakti potential of Shiva, Bina, the fire of the Holy Spirit. This is why true human beings are represented as trees in the Garden of Eden. It is written, And out of the ground made Yodhava Elohim, the Holy Spirit, to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The two trees of Eden are the tree of the science of good and evil and the tree of life. These two trees of the orchard even share their roots. The tree of life is represented by our own physical body, by the spinal column. And the tree of knowledge is represented by our own sexual organs. These trees of Eden even share their roots. God placed Kerubim in a flaming sword to keep the way of the tree of life. If the fallen human being could eat the delicious fruits of the tree of life, they now will have fornicator gods that would have been the damnation of damnations, the most terrible sacrifice and the impossible. This is why menacingly or menacingly and terribly the flaming sword of cosmic justice blazingly turns every way to keep the way of the tree of life. The tree of life is the being. Now then, we must know that the innermost is our spirit, the being, the tree of life, the innermost is the most beloved son of the inner Christ. The ray from which our innermost emanated is our inner Christ. The inner Christ is one with the Father. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are a perfect triad. The innermost was born from this triad. The innermost, has said, is enveloped by six inferior vehicles, six lower sephiroth, which penetrate and co-penetrate without confusion, thus forming the human being. All faculties and powers of the innermost are the fruits of the tree of life. 
Human beings will eat the fruits of the tree of life when they return to Eden. Then they will see God face to face without dying. The lightning will serve them as a scepter and the tempest will be as carpeting for their feet. Sexual alchemy is the sublimation of the sexual solar energy along the spinal medulla, thanks to the two serpents of the caduceus of Mercury or the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which in the pentagram vertically connects the alpha and the omega. These two serpents are two semi-physical, semi-ethereal nervous cords, which are known in Sanskrit as Ida and Pingala, and in alchemy as Ob and Od. In Kabbalah, these two cords are represented by the Hebrew letter Vav whose word in Hebrew, Vav, is spelled with two vowels. Vav means and. Now we are going to talk about how Vav connects Alpha and Omega. Since the two Hebrew letters Vav, or the Greek Alpha and Omega, represent Adam and Eve. Alpha, the brain, is connect, connected to Pingala, and Omega, the genitalia, is connected to Ida. Moreover, the letter Vav is the sixth Kabbalistic letter. Six is the number of the lovers, the sixth arcanon of the Tarot, who are two men and women. So 6 plus 6 equals 12, the 12 salts of alchemy, which are represented by the 12 tribes of Israel and by the 6 points and the 6 entrances between the points of the hexagram. Thus, the star of David represents the two lovers, the two vavs, the two sixes or sexes, of king and queen, united in the boiler of alchemy. The bipolarization of the creative sexual cosmic energy in the human organism was analyzed since ancient times in the initiatic colleges of Egypt Mexico, Peru, Greece, Chaldea, Rome, Phoenicia, India, etc. The ascension of this solar and lunar energy from the genitalia to the brain is performed thanks to these pair of nervous cords that in the form of an eight splendidly unfold to the right and to the left of the dorsal spine. We now have arrived at the science of the caduceus of Mercury on the wings of the spirit that in the caduceus are always opened. All traditions which search forth from within the profound night of all ages state that when the solar and lunar atoms of the seminal system make contact in the triveni, close to the coccyx, then as a simple electric induction, a third force awakens, which is the marvelous fire of love. This is from the Three Mountains by Samael on the Or. The fire of love or Kundalini, the goddess of love, 
is represented by the zodiacal sign of Venus, located in the center of the pentagram, precisely at the level of the heart. It joins the zodiacal sign of Mercury, or Hermes, Tot, the giver of the word, or Logos. The great priest of Egypt, all inheritors of the archaic wisdom that was cultivated by the Atlanteans, represented the great god Mercury, Hermes, Trismegistus, or god Ibis of Thoth, Thoth, with a virile member in a state of erection. Krumheller states that over this erected phallus of the Ibis of Thoth, a phrase was written which said, Giver of reasoning. Next to the inscription, a lotus flower shone gloriously, the perfect matrimony by Samael on the earth. In the second part of Kama Sutra, the great Hindustani master Vatsyayana wisely exposes an abundant esoteric teaching about the art of loving, especially occupying himself with something extraordinary, that is, the division of the types of women and men in accordance with the sizes of their sexual parts. He intelligently presents three types of men who are designated in accordance with their phallus as hare, bull, stallion. In comparison to these males, the women are also classified in three types, in accordance with the constitution of their yoni, sexual organ. Gazelle, mare, and female elephant. This differentiation in both sexes gives fundamentally nine amorous combinations, which come to remind us of the ninth fear. First, excellent sexual pleasure, hair with gazelle, bull with mare, stallion with female elephant, unmatched sexual unions, hair with mare, hair with female elephant, Bull with gazelle, bull with female elephant. Stallion with mare, stallion with gazelle. The nine possibilities of sexual union are subdivided into three types in accordance with the size of the sexual organs. The proportion of the same size is indubitably the best. The relationship between large and small organs between which the enjoyment of pleasure is, not, is most unfortunate. All of the other amorous relations can be classified as regular. Unquestionably, the temperament of the consort displays a great role in the sexual act. These are grouped in three types. Cold, mild, and hot. Therefore, nine types of couplings are possibly or possible in the nine sphere, namely cold with cold, mild with mild, hot with hot. On much sexual unions a call with mild, call with hot, mild with cold, mild with hot, hot with cold, hot with mild. Among the Hindus, the span of the sexual enjoyment, that is to say, 
the possibility of a long duration is not based, for instance, in purely sensual animal activity. Rather, it is considered a vital matter that expresses in, a per, in, in the performance or the performed act as a demonstration of a very developed and exquisite culture. The consort, who is not truly educated about the most intimate sexual phenomena, is considered deficient. This is what any man is, according to Rasa Manjuri, who when in the act of love does not reflect upon what he should or should not do. By all means, it stands out in dazzling clarity that the prolongation of the sexual enjoyment is divided in three types. Fast, moderate, and slow. The secret of God, happiness, consists in his relation with himself. From such a relation, in accordance with the laws of philosophical analogies, comes every cosmic vehicle, every sexual junction. Therefore, the sexual act is a legitimate right of the human being. It is the happiness of God expressing itself through us. Mohammed said, Coitus is an act even pleasant unto religion, if, whenever it is performed, it is with the invocation of Allah and for the reproduction, reproduction with one's own woman. The Quran states, Go and take for a wife a maiden whom you caress and who caresses you. Do not begin coitus without previously arousing each other with caresses. The prophet emphasizes, Your women are your tilth, so come into your tillage how you choose, but do as previous good act for yourselves, and fear God, and know that one day you are going to meet him. Accordingly, with the former thoughts, it is clear that the delightful coitus with the beloved is certainly a form of prayer. In those moments of supreme enjoyment, we convert ourselves into collaborators with the Creator Logos. We continue with the radiant and, in every instant, recreative task of the maintenance of the universe within the mysterious bosom of the eternal mother space. Do as your Creator does, as a powerful man in, this, in, in deeds and strength, who has consciousness in what he does. Thus, you will obtain double enjoyment and increasing seminal liquor and a healthy and strong children. This is what Mohammed said. Ten graces bequests Allah to the man who grants his sympathy to the woman with caressing hands. Twenty if he presses her against his heart. Yet, if his amorous embrace is the authentic one, then he obtains from God thirty graces for every kiss. This is a quotation from the Parsifal on Veil by Samael on Veor. And in the perfect matrimony, the Master Samael on Veor stated, no one has been able to define love. It has to be lived. 
It has to be felt. Only great lovers really know that which is called love. The perfect matrimony is a union of two beings who truly know how to love. In order that there truly be love, it is necessary for men and women to adore each other in all the seven great cosmic planes. In order for love to exist, it is necessary for a true communion of souls to exist in the three spheres of thought, feeling, and will. When the two beings vibrate in affinity in their thoughts, feelings, and volition, then the perfect matrimony is consummated in the seven planes of cosmic consciousness. Once our John the Baptist is fully developed, then we can start talking about the decapitation or the end of the world. What world? The world that we have within our sinful mind. Remember that Salome is the one who asks for the decapitation of John. Salome is Omega. She represents the process of how this alchemical work must be end. Biblical, uh, biblical prophecies are alchemically, initiatically fulfilled within the initiate or catastrophically experienced with humanity. Gnostics experience them through the eight Venustic initiation. In the second triangle of the Tree of Life, we find three mounts, namely Chesed, or Mount Carmel, Geburá, or Mount Sinai, and Tifereth, the Mount of Olives. These are the three sephiroths that represent the monad, spirit, divine soul, and human soul. Tifereth, the Mount of Olives, is where the human soul unites with the Son, the Christ, and becomes the Son of Man. Thus, let us study the following quotations according to the Venustic initiations or incarnation of our own inner Jesus Christ. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? In Hebrew, things is Debarim, which is Deuteronomy or Deuteronomy, the second law. Verily I said unto you, there shall not be left here on this one stone upon the other that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, which is Tifereth, the disciples' soul came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the eon? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all of these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. 
All of these karmic things are happening in these times of the end in accordance with the law. Thus, everybody is expecting the coming of the Lord Christ. But let us read what Jesus said about the coming of the Son of Man. Then shall they, the lords of karma, deliver you up to, the, to be afflicted according to our deeds, and shall psychologically kill you, initiatically, or through the second death. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. The gospel of the kingdom has never been preached because the meaning of the four gospels is alchemically and cabalistic. Thus, without knowing alchemy and Kabbalah, the four gospels are usually misinterpreted. The gospels are practical guidances for the alchemists. We do not need to believe in the Gospels, but to practice what is alchemically and cabalistically written in its pages. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whosoever reads, let him understand if we do not know Kabbalah and alchemy, we cannot know what this quotation means. In Hebrew, the Sefira Bina means understanding. This is the passage that written there means, let him understand indicating the Sephirah Bina, the Holy Spirit, named Jehovah Elohim in the world of Atsilus. Bina is the head of the left column of the Tree of Life. The left column corresponds to Omega or Ida. Bina rules Yasod, the genitalia. Daniel, in Hebrew, means God is my judge and relates to the Sephira Gebura, which literally means severity or judgment and represents the divine soul, Neshama. The Sephira Gebura is underneath Bina. A particle of Neshama is sent as the embryo of soul into Malkut, our physicality. Beneath Gebura is the Sephira Hod, which relates to the rituals of the sun, Christ, the heart, in all religions. Thus, the holy place is the left column the Sephiroth Bina, Gebura, and Hod, where the Holy Spirit and the Son abides alone with the soul. In the central column, we find the atom of the Holy Spirit in the pineal gland, which is the seat of the soul. The altar of the Son and the Holy Spirit is the heart which relates to the Sefirah Tifereth, 
the human soul. The, taber the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit is Yasod, the genitalia. The sephira da'at is the throat, where the word is gestated. Therefore, the abomination of desolation, or what makes these holy places desolate and abominable, are atheism, or doctrines that deny the existence of God and the soul. Hatred in the heart towards any religion of Malkut, the world, and any type of sexual degeneration. Those who abolish intelligence, Bina, the Holy Spirit, out of the universe, abolish sulfur and mercury from themselves and transform themselves into idols or statues of salt. Since they make of salt or matter the only source, substance, and object of existence. They do not know what a soft the soul is. Indeed, degenerate ignoramuses had and are depriving the earth and humanity of the Christic solar light, fire, and life, making it formless and void, an empty and desolate place, since they are the very source of the abomination of desolation. Then let them, the archetypes of Israel, which be in Judea, the second triangle of the tree of life, namely Geburah and Tiferet, or Mount Sinai and Mount Olives, where alone the Son of Man is to be found, even to the heights and fastness of Hesed in Mount Carmel, betake themselves by Moses, into the mountain of initiation and resurrection. Those who are in Judea are the authentic Jews, who are the children of the lion from the tribe of Judah, meaning the Christified ones. Let him which is on the house top, Tifereth, not come down to take anything out of his house, his physicality. Neither let him which is in the field, Yesod, return back to take his lunar cloths as Lot's wife. And woe unto them that are with child, with not fully developed soul, and to them that give suck in those days those whose soul is fed with milk and not with meat, for they are not able to bear or to comprehend the hidden truth of the Gospels. Those who fed themselves with solid food comprehend the Gospels and are able to walk by themselves with faith in the times of tribulation. But pray, that your flight be not in the winter, in your spiritual night, without the light of the Son Christ, neither on the Sabbath day, or spiritual repose, sexual pass. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since Alpha, or the beginning of the world, to this time, Omega, no, nor ever shall be, and except those days should be shortened, 
to eight qualifications, there should no flesh be said. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened to eight initiatic years. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning comes out of the east, Tifereth, and shines even unto the west, Malkut, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So Tifereth is the east, and Malkut is the west. This time the Lord is not coming from without, but from within. The Son of Man is Chochmah, incarnated in Tifereth. That is, Christ incarnated in the human soul. This time the Lord is coming from within each one of us, through the Venustic initiation. Those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord, as in the time of Jesus of Nazareth, are wasting their time miserably. Those times are gone. Now everything is internal. We need to awaken the consciousness. For wheresoever the carcass, empty humanoid physicalities without soul, is, there will be deceiver and deceivers as eagles or vultures be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall Christ, the Son, be darkened by atheism, and the soul, the moon, shall not give or reflect her spiritual light to the mind. And the stars, the intellectual ignoramuses, shall fall as idols from their false heaven. And the true powers of the heavens upon humanity shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of Aquarius, which is the Son of Man in heaven of Geburah, pouring the knowledge of Gnosis into Malkut. And then shall all the tribes of Malkut, the earth, mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming down into Malkut in the clouds of Kabbalah and alchemy, mysteries of heaven, of Tifereth with power and great glory. And he, Samael on the or, shall send his angels, messengers, with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Buddha meditated and acquired enlightenment at the foot of a fig tree that is called the body tree. The fruit of the fig tree resembles the ovaries or testicles. It is written, And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he, had, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. 
and presently the fig tree withered away. Matthew chapter 21, verse 19. All the powers of the mind, all the powers of light and heat, all the powers of the world and willpower are enclosed within the sacred serpent, whose power resides in the phallus and the uterus. Every tree, therefore, which brings not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Fornicators are sterile fig trees who are hewed down and cast into the fire. The fig tree symbolizes omega, the feminine sexual forces that we must to learn how to control. The rooster and the fig tree represents the masculine and feminine sexual forces. This is why the rooster of Christ's passion cannot be absent from the drama of Calvary. Calvary, from Latin calvaria, Latin skull, skull. Translation of Greek cranion, itself a translation of Golgotha addressing the masculine creative forces of the brain or cerebral spinal fluids. The fig tree solely represents the feminine sexual forces within the male or female genitalia. It is impossible to reach deep realization without the alchemy of the feminine solar forces. Christ in his dignity as cosmic Christ said, I am the door, and by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. The Christic substance of the Savior of the world is placed in our Christic semen. This is why the door that enters into Eden is in our sexual organs. Ignis Rose by Samael on the Or. When we break a branch, we see the milk that circulates in the fig tree or feminine sexual organs or parasympathetic nervous system and the unfermented wine, the masculine forces of Christ in the vine or grand sympathetic nervous system. Christ is divine. Bina, the divine mother, Kundalini, is the fig tree. That in Christianity is called Mary. We must tread the vine press of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty God and drink its wine in order to harvest the figs of knowledge. Christ said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he purchases it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word, the Logos, which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abides not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and... My words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. 
Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. John chapter 15, 1 to 8. When the Lord is crucified on your sexual cross, he examines your sexual organs, your fig tree, and sees if you have fruits. If you do, he then is satisfied with your alchemical work. It is written. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple incarnated her. That is, he took her unto his own home. After this, he said, It is finished. And bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Verily I said unto you, This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my logos shall not pass away. But of that day and hour, not no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two, Cain and Abel, be in the field of Yesod. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women, Sarah and Hagar, shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord do come. Matthew chapter 24, verse 2 to 42. The whole thing explained with Gnostic Kabbalah. Sexual abusers are sterile fig trees who are hewed down and cast into the fire. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,